Hey guys, welcome back to Jibber Jab Reviews and thanks for tuning into this latest episode. Now it's been about two days since I released my report on the Galaxy Watch, which included the features, the specs, and of course the pricing of the device. And ever since then, I've had tons of viewers comments asking basically, is it worth the upgrade? Well, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna look at some of the pros and the cons of the Galaxy Watch and I'll actually leave that up to you to decide if you think it's worth the upgrade for you because it is a $350 purchase, which is basically the same amount as the S3 when it was released. And I know how much you guys love the S3. I love the S3. Question is, is it worth the upgrade to the Galaxy Watch? Well, let's go have a closer look at the features and what you're actually getting. Okay, so I broke the pros and cons down into three main categories, which are design, features, and performance. First, I definitely think the design is great looking, and that's probably because it's very similar to the S3, which has been Samsung's most popular smartwatch. So if you're a fan of the S3, then I really don't think you have anything negative to say about the Galaxy Watch, because you still get that trademark circular and rotating bezel for navigation, the two physical buttons on the side, and it actually looks like a watch which is one of the main gripes users had about the Gear Sport because that looked more like a technology piece. Now, as far as cons go, I really don't have much to say here other than I'm a bit disappointed that the larger 46 millimeter version is only being offered in one color and that's that dual tone silver and black version. I think they should have offered an all black, all silver and this multi-tone version, but that's just me. Basically, if you want an all black version, you're gonna have to buy the smaller 42 millimeter version, and then you're also giving up some benefits such as that larger battery. So I'm giving the choices here a con only because you basically don't have any choice, at least in the larger model. Okay, next are the Galaxy Watch features. And while there are a few here, I wouldn't call them earth shattering by any means, but at least they are new and here's what you get. First, you have an increased fitness and health functionality, and on the fitness side, you have 21 new indoor exercises with a total of 39 workouts that allow you to customize and change up your routines, which means you can switch between activities and the watch will automatically recognize those different activities and then calculate the results based on that specific exercise. It also comes with a new stress measurement mode, which automatically detects high levels of stress by monitoring your heart rate, and then offers breathing exercises to help users keep calm and relaxed. There's also a new sleep tracker, which monitors all levels of your sleep, including REM cycles. And this is basically used to help identify and adjust sleeping habits so you can maximize your energy for the day. Now, I don't know how well these new features will work, or even if it was really required, but they are new and Samsung has been focusing a lot more on your health and fitness, especially since the Gear Sport release. So at least they do get some credit here for coming up with something new. I just question its usefulness for the average user. Another new feature for the Galaxy Watch will be how easy it will now be to access and control other devices connected through the SmartThings app. So assuming you have your other devices smart wired to the app, you could essentially control the lights, turn on the TV, and even adjust the temperature all from your wrist. Now, I think that's a pretty neat feature, but to be honest, I think most people are already attached to their phones, so I would probably think of making those adjustments through my phone first, but I know Samsung also wants to bring all its devices under one connected umbrella, so the functionality will be there if you need it. The other point revolves around Bixby and being able to use its advanced intelligence to help you get access to information and give commands all hands free. Again, I don't know how important this feature is to have from your wrist, but I understand the vision of a connected ecosystem of devices, so this capability will now be extended to the Galaxy Watch. And to make this possible, this also means that you're gonna get the newest Tizen software on your watch, which will be the 4.0 version. Okay, so what are the cons of the Galaxy Watch for features, or lack thereof, should I say? Well, you aren't getting the MST payment options, and Samsung has instead decided to stick with the NFC method, and I know a lot of users were hoping or expecting this for the Galaxy Watch, so I think this was a pretty big oversight for Samsung. Another con, and keep this in mind, this was just a rumor, but many of us were hoping that the blood pressure monitor would make its way into the Galaxy Watch. Unfortunately, we're not gonna see that either, and I think that would have been a great function to promote for its health and fitness improvements, but it looks like we're gonna have to wait a little bit longer before seeing it in a Samsung smartwatch. 
Okay, now let's talk more about the performance improvements in the Galaxy Watch. Well, first and probably the most important feature is that the battery size has been increased, approximately 25% larger than the S3, which means you should get a few more days out of a single charge. Now, I'm only getting two days out of my S3 now, so if I can even get four days, that would be a much welcome increase. Next, the Galaxy Watch is equipped with an industry-leading water resistance 5 ATM rating, which means you're covered up to 164 feet underwater. And this is also the same as the Gear Sport rating, and that's great news for the swimmers out there. Now, unfortunately, I'm more of a sinker than a swimmer, and I think wearing my watch in the shower is a bit odd, so this isn't a benefit for me, but if you are a swimmer, then this will definitely be an important feature for you. Okay, and here is the main performance con, and really this is a big one in my eyes, and that's it, there will not be any increase in the internal memory. The storage capacity is going to remain capped at four gigabytes, and considering Samsung made mention to 60,000 watch faces being available for the Galaxy Watch, I think they missed the mark here in terms of offering more storage. I would have liked to have seen a minimum six gigabyte capacity, but now we're left to manage all our apps, music, and watch faces with four gigabytes, and that's really unfortunate. Okay guys, that wraps up my top pros and cons of the new Galaxy Watch. And as I said, I'm gonna leave it up to you to decide if you think the upgrade is worth it for you. But I think one of my viewers summed it up best by saying that the Galaxy Watch can be considered a light evolution and not a major revolution in the smartwatch world. Anyways, I hope this more detailed breakdown was helpful and let me know in the comments below if you think these pros and cons are enough for you to make the upgrade to the Galaxy Watch or if you think you'll stick with the S3 for the foreseeable future. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I'll see you in the next episode. Okay, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and I would really appreciate it if you could share this video and to subscribe to my channel. It really helps me keep the channel going so I can continue to offer you guys discounts, giveaways, and fresh content. And if you want to be notified when the newest video is just released, then just click on that bell icon next to the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.